food source in the next couple months. So much hope for the future. Chantos goat milk, our chicken eggs, and our corn. Wow. A little bit of straw. It is, yeah. I think it is my first ever cornbread. Dos, tres, yeah. yeah. Literally on the brink of death. Woohoo! It finally happened, guys. It's all in nice and big. This guy. The idea of the garden came about while searching for the solutions to the problems that the world faces. If we wish to do anything positive in this world, we must first stop funding those who are working to destroy the earth. We must work together to create alternative infrastructure that allows people to no longer rely or participate in the system. We need open, consensus-run lands where this and other possibilities can happen. Just as individuals prosper by working together, so can communities prosper when they work with other communities. Those that have done so much with so little for so long will now do the impossible with nothing at all. You can see the half and half. This is kitchen compost and this is the mulch compost from Poppins. Oh look, this is a good sign. Yeah, <laughs> that's the good stuff. Yeah, I know. I guess they try to put their hair in the compost. That's okay. This is really acceptable form. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're like, they already went to seed, they're falling down, and then they're gonna pop back up again next. Okay. So, so I have some seeds I'm gonna grab off that asparagus bush there. It's all about the root. When it's this big, it's just literally just like a stick of asparagus, and you just yeah. like cut it, and then you eat it, and then it pops up again. It's another stick of asparagus, and you cut it, and you eat it, and it pops up again, and you cut it, you eat it. And then if you don't cut it, it turns into this, and it grows seed. What? Yeah. Wow. I don't think I've ever had this there. You see it in the garden that was fun. It's a short period of time. Yeah, it's pretty it's early. Oh. So close. See, I don't want to hit it. Yeah. I like Abby's idea of like trench on either side. Like over here and then over here? Yeah. Is this? These people. This is definitely it right here. Yeah. It's nice. Should I get started? Sure, we're going to need it on the bottom layer. Depending on if it holds deep enough. We're so close. Well, now we are doing higher. You need to go down too shallow. Can't I'm just harvesting some of this baby bok choy. I'm making a butternut squash soup for lunch. So I'm gonna throw in some of these greens. These are still pretty small. They'll get a lot bigger, but 
We could take a little bit. There's some leaves that are starting to fade a little bit. So I'm just gonna throw those in the soup because they're still tasty. This, we ran out, so we're gonna need to get another bale soon, but I'm hoping that'll help keep this bed nice and warm so that uh, it'll last a little bit farther into the winter because these greens will keep up for a long time and they'll keep producing and so hopefully that can be a big food source in the next couple months before it gets kind of too cold for that. So I'm just keeping them extra warm. This bed's also on a hillside and it has the forest here so it tends to stay warm a little bit longer than the gardens up there so I'm hope I have higher hopes for this bok choy than the other bok choy of actually like surviving so. Cool. Butternuts. I used some of the ones that had like big gashes in them and stuff that weren't going to last as long to try to get those used up. Butternut squash and onion. And then I'm take some of this peanut butter that we get from Eastland. They have like a giant nut butter factory, but they have like tons of different kinds of butter. So when they're switching their butter pump, they have like this butter that they can't sell. So we get tons of these buckets. Whoa, nice. Okay. Yeah, for me, this whole peanut trade thing or gift vibe that we have going on East Wind is like... I know, it just gives me so much hope for the future of mutual aid, all communities. Yeah, it's nice to not have to be like conservative with peanut butter, just be like, yes, this is a good source. And it was something we didn't really have any, like, to make our own peanut butter would be like a whole operation. So like the fact that they already have the infrastructure to do so, we can just share it is what the whole thing's about. Round up corn that we grew. I made like awesome corn flour empanadas the other day, but I'm sifting it and I'm gonna get these like big flakes out and then grind it a second time in our hand grinder. This has already been ground a couple times, but I'm trying to get it really fine so I can make cornbread. And yeah, most of it we're saving for seed um, not using so that we can grow a lot more next year. Yeah, so I thought it'd be nice to make like a full cornbread out of something that we grew, and then also Johnzo brought over a bunch of goat milk.
and some that's like a week old, so it's kind of creamy. So I was saying we could do cornbread with Johnzo's goat milk, our chicken eggs, and our corn. Wow. Oh. Of course. Can I try so I just look like I'm <laughs> Okay. Then I'm going to do one last sip, then I'm just going to leave it. So yeah, I think I'll just take out all that stuff. I don't know what it could be used for. It could be like fried with something, and then I'll use the fine stuff for the cornbread. <laughs> These are maybe duck eggs, actually. Even they might be the yolks look pretty yellow. I'm not sure if they are. This will be like a very like strong, funky cornbread because we'll be like duck eggs, goat milk. It's gonna be a funky cornbread. Got it. I'm not a baker, so if anybody that's a baker is watching this, they might be like, what is she doing? That looks like, that looks right to me. I'm just gonna cover it for now and I will put it in the oven later. What, at this point, it's I'd say two foot all the way around, right? One more layer just to get that two and a half foot. So we're at two, and we want two and a half to three feet. I uh, like to see how there's gaps in the beams. We're just gonna fill that up with cob. And yeah, we're not going for longevity here. It's just gonna be like two or three years. Without chainsaw brothers, without them, this wouldn't be possible. So these beams here were brought down to the other side, like this other land, who's our, our neighbors down there, to, uh, I don't even know why, to build something cool. And they've just been, to build what? To build an outdoor kitchen. And uh, I guess they've just been chilling there, kind of rotten, but now it's actually perfect for using to build this thing for these trees to be safe. Tree nursery. <laughs> I know, I, I was like, oh shit, I forgot what a tree nursery was called. Thank you. We just need to, yeah, There's what, some, like a few more trips to pop and fill it up. Manure. Yeah. We gotta fill it up to the, to the tippy top. Right to tip. And we could, you know, we could find other things. Uh. But down at the kitchen bus, have you ever, I'm gonna check the kitchen bus because it'd be really nice if we can get some of our own yeah, yeah, yeah. juice in there, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, I know a little spot. I was working on it all last year. Uh, um, I don't know if it's like, yeah, let's go look. We want to insource for a resource. Well, we don't want to outsource for the resource. Maybe it's no. There's surely good stuff right in there. Yeah, that looks great. Everything in the wire here would be the the spot because during the winter, uh, we'll go in here, we'll hang out, and we'll just basically throw all the food right into here. <sighs> good stuff already in here.
I wonder who this guy is. Oh, wow. Some sort of big boy. Oh, yeah. He looks like he was already smacked down, so. Is it bird? No, that's not burdock. Is it? You smell it? it? Smells like burdock, actually. Or something. It does smell like burdock. This might be burdock. Yeah, like, like burdock, uh, burdock and dandelion and burdock is what we have in the UK. Yeah. It's really good. <laughs> Get them meters back, bro. <laughs> so yeah, like I was saying, all this fresh, beautiful compost is coming from whenever we're here in the winter, because we go into that winter bus, it's too cold down in the outdoor kitchen. And so all the food scraps that come from there have all been turned into this beautiful soil. And I, for some reason, I was turning it every single other day. But uh, I think I just wanted to work out and in doing so we have this beautiful fertilizer right now. One of the key signs to know if, if you have a good compost is the smell, the look of it. Do you see microbial activity? Do you see little bugs in there? Do you see life? You want to see life. But most importantly in the process of creating this good compost, it's the smell that you have to pay attention to. You don't want a sour smell. You want it to be nice and sweet. It's all about having air at your compost to have it not smell bad. Of course, you can have anaerobic, um, anaerobic, I guess the thing without here. You can do it with that. It's just a whole different process. And if it does not smell that nice, beautiful, sweet smell, it smells sour possibly, you could add some hay or straw or grass clippings into it and turn it in again. Make sure it's not getting wet. You don't want a puddle to be gathering at your compost. You want a nice heap where the water runs off and allows air just to flow in throughout it. We have this pile of mulch just laying here that these guys just bring. I think they chop down trees to build electrical wires. And so they just bring this mulch here for free. And right now it's just here kind of in the way. Our thinking is if we could just move it slightly over to where these kind of little frames are to keep little transplants warm and whatever, little seedlings warm. Then if we move the mulch next to it in the colder periods, that mulch might end up being a heat source for them plants.
chef what chili is cornbread is that <laughs> it is, yeah. I think it is my first ever cornbread. That's really? beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yay! Yeah. America. Garden eggs, Johnzo's goat milk, and our corn flour, pan ground. Mm. Mm -hmm. A little bit of straw. What I've got in front of me is this, one of these big, huge, long guys. Do you know what these are called, Sol? The long Yeah. No, I don't I just know that they're the long squash. That's the long squash. The long squash. It, it just makes sense to make this as a pizza sauce because we have so, so much of it and not so little tomato. Oh no, wait, not so much tomato. <laughs> it, bul it, it bulks it up, but not only does it bulk it up, um, it actually adds like a better texture to the whole thing. 
it gives it a little bit of more oomph. And so it sticks to the dough nicely. What are we chopping here? These are all the bushes we just planted. So these are the Jerusalem artichokes over here. They're kind of like potatoes, but they have like a nuttier taste. And they're pretty cool. They just they grow really easily. So you plant a few, they'll just keep growing. And uh, they're a really good food source. Oh yeah. Oh Woo That's a chunky one. Oh feeling more goodies. Oh, absolutely. Pizza time. So, Yo, we got a fire going on here already, so we thought we'll make breakfast right now while we're at it. Follow me, Ms. Lucas. Let's take this, bro. You ready? Uno, dos, tres! Did Sorry. you throw it on the other pizza? <laughs> What'd you do? Uh, That's a little savage. Oh, I know. <laughs> we haven't even eaten them like in excess. We've just been eating them on pizza, but it's like an immediate result where like all of a sudden everybody. Really? is falling all of a sudden? Oh Really, I don't even know how long these asparagus have been here, but they've been here for a very long time. For some reason, I'm feeling 10 years because they came here with 
these trees here because there was a land project that was kind of being abandoned and uh, the one who, person who was working on it said well hey go down to the land and get all the trees and you know the asparagus that's down there and so they did and then they replanted it here but since it was such a long time ago well we might have made some mistakes as you can see the asparagus over here is getting shaded by these trees so our idea is to dig it up build new trenches and just move it onto the side with a lot more space to grow out and it's really cool because asparagus is one of the first things that you get to eat uh, in the year so to really try put some effort in to get a better yield out of this will do us great especially since i just found out about pickled asparagus which is incredible but it's a really delicate process because you have to dig under the asparagus and it takes around 10 minutes just to get one asparagus out because the roots are so finicky and weird so it's a really long process to get every single crown out and make sure it's done well We start digging, the chickens start coming. They're looking for worms too. Day two of working on the asparagus. <laughs> It's been raining here the past few days and so that really helps the mushrooms grow and there's already actually even been a bunch of oyster mushrooms that have been found in the kitchen that I'll show you later but I'm here at the pond right now and I think it's gonna be a great spot to find them not only just because it's random but because we grow shiitakes here we have logs that we've set up and we inseminate them I don't I know I know it's the right word for that. Yeah, but here I am <laughs> And so we, uh, you know, we do the thing and we put them up and, uh, you know, every few weeks they grow some mushrooms. But especially on rainy days like this, it's great to find some. So I think we might be able to find some dinner right here. Oh, too small. Hey, ducks. Hmm. They're all really just so tiny right now. They've kind of been like this for a few days now. If anyone has any advice, on how to make these guys grow bigger faster. Is it too cold right now? If you could let me know in the comments. We have tons all around here. These guys are all coming up. They're beautiful. Oh, look at this. Someone's took a chomp of this one. See, when you get, you're too late.
It was so hard to film. It's really difficult because when you're cutting mushrooms off from a log or whenever even you just find them in the woods, it's really important to use a knife. And you want to have like a nice clean cut on the stem. It just promotes growth, I think. It makes uh, maybe like another mushroom grow there instead a lot easier. Or the spores to come out, you know. I don't know. I've heard that it's the right thing to do. And so <laughs> it's kind of hard to film that. Maybe next time I'll use a tripod. Like juicy, like dirty mushroom. These are the beginnings of our blueberry labyrinth. From bird's eye view, you can kind of see the layout, but for here, you can see all these, like probably two year old blueberry bushes. Maybe older than that, I'm not sure. It was a year ago that we planted them. Come in this way, and then take you this way. So ideally, once these get big and bushy, you'll be able to just go through six blueberries. And then it wraps all the way around, takes you through. This is the winter kitchen, probably going to move into in like the next couple weeks or something. It's still pretty warm during the day, but it's been getting cold at night, so it's nice to be down here. been drying some herbs. This basil looks almost ready. I'll probably start jarring it up. Cleaning this space. Air butter. That's cool. Elderberry syrup. From all those pears we had. Not that much, but something. Uh one of our cherry trees that we had to chop down because we were shaving out the blueberries. We shaved off all of the bark. You can make like teas out of it or tinctures. Uh, it's like very, it's uh, relaxing um, and it's good for the respiratory health. And it's crazy, it actually like tastes like cherries. It's like the bark of the tree it has this like dark kind of like winter cherry taste to it. It's really cool. We have a ton of that, so we can like, I don't know, jar that or put it in bags or something. Or like a nice burlap bag would be a good way to save that. We get our solar set up here so that we can, because we're leaving soon, but we can donate it so people have a little more power this winter. This looks like the peach uh, seeds, like the pit of the peaches, which you can actually plant and it'll grow to seed. If that's what it is, you might not be. We grow more of our wild peach trees, start seeding them so when they die, we already got new ones coming along. <laughs> I wonder what this is. Oh my god, it looks like it's about to explode. Okay, I'm gonna open this outside. Okay, it didn't explode. Oh yeah, vinegar. That's cool. Looks like homemade vinegar. So it's not done, it's still releasing air. But if we put them in here, it'll like carbonate because it's gonna get pressured. So it makes it like sparkling wine. Oh, okay. Because you can't do it in like a regular bottle because it's not like this can like latch close like enough that oh. it's not like, you know. Um, so we can do some in there and then we could probably even, I wonder if we could use like this or like, we could use a smaller carboy to keep fermenting the rest. Huh. So that we can drink some and then have less that we need to bottle. Um, 
Yeah. So this had to pee. <laughs> Let's go bottle the wine. Sound good? Okay. I'm going to go look for some more bottles and bottle up the pear wine that I made about five weeks ago or something like that. It's Halloween, so it's almost ready, and I want to drink it. I'm going to check down at the Moss Lodge with Haley, because that's what we were fermenting our last wine, so I think there might be some carboys down there. Have you ever investigated this? What is it? Well, it's labeled uh, it's agave, with agave peach wine. So I think it's the wine I made last year. Mm. We could try it. There's more, there's these like moonshine. Nice. And then still peach. Yes, that's, yeah. That's funny, I remember this. Exact <laughs> one. Hopefully it doesn't come to this, but <laughs> it, you, know, you never know. Oof. Yeah, it's like vinegar. Mm. I think it would have been good if it was filled up, but yeah, it's vinegar. The other day when we went, Ben fell asleep on the way. I was like, <laughs> I couldn't tell what they were. Like, it just looked like a lot of like black, like uh, crinoline dresses, and I was like, Well, kind of, yeah. So I'm like, <laughs> it's just. Okay. Oh, where is it? Okay. Huh? These will level People out. Say again. like a, a hound's mm. worth. <laughs> well, these will separate. The dead stuff will fall again. Oh, and this still needs to be worked with. Well, I'm just saying it can. It will like when these are done, there'll be more dead yeast at the bottom, and mm. we'll need to siphon out again anyway. So if we get some dead yeast, it'll just fall to the bottom. Okay. Go lower. Pull up. Whoa. We're gonna try to bring this one down. <laughs> right. And then I'm gonna rearrange the roosting bars in there so they can have their own space. I think they'll be fine. The other, few of the other birds have already like come into their pen and checked them out. Oh, cool. So they, they weren't nice, but. It's okay, little ducky. It's all right, birdies. It's my new home. You and your roommate, friends. <laughs> <laughs> All done. You little birdies down. Now I gotta go see it. <laughs> Those are Isa Browns, and they're um, Windouts, 
gold and silver lace wine dots, and the there's three Rhode Island reds. Oh my god, look at the size difference though here. This guy's tiny. The Rhode Island Reds are like a week younger mm. than oh, the other ones. Oh, okay, that's why. Huh? The Ice Browns and the Wine Dots are all born, uh, I think, on the same day or like the same couple days. The Rhode Island Reds were significantly smaller. They were only three days, three days old when we got them back here. Those Wine Dots are really cool looking, right? These guys? Yeah. Yeah. Really cool looking. Very curious, but they're a little skittish. The Isa Browns, there's one that every time I watered them, they would, like the one would hop on my arm. Like, I could put it on my shoulder right yeah. now and walk around with it. Do they squat for you? No. No, okay. I, they, they haven't done that yet. I've heard about that though. Yeah, dude, my dad, <laughs> he goes over and he squat for him, you know? I've heard about that. I'm not gonna let them do that. <laughs> the, roost, the rooster, rooster has already, like, the rooster already checked him out. Oh yeah. Like, well, that's probably different. Thing. If there's a rooster, they probably don't try and attach you to that. Yeah. That's funny. They're so cool, though. I love these birds. Like really. Oh, <laughs> yeah. When they get bullied by the bigger birds, that you know, this is already the bigger bird's home, but uh, they have a safe place to go to. But I'm gonna rearrange these roosting bars so that they have a place to go after their cage goes away, after I take the cage. Maybe you want to go look at the Icelandics? Yeah. Walking really nice and slow. And... Little eaters. That one was on the brink of death. And it's so happy to, like, I feel so good to see it, like, grown up. But yeah, this, this little birdie right here. Yeah, that little birdie was literally on the brink of death. I'm, she's, like, look at how cute she is. Poopy butt and all. These are Icelandic chickens. They're very, very hardy, and they will take care of themselves and the hens are broody meaning they they like to sit on their eggs and hatch their young which is a trait that's been bred out of chickens over the decades and centuries or whatever but these this is a variety of chicken that came from Iceland just fed it with um there's a little dropper over there. Mm -hmm. Dropper fed it. And, uh, yeah, just gave it, gave it love. Like, one thing that really helps, I know it sounds weird, but taking a bird and, like, holding it next to your chest. Like, like, like I could pick up a bird that was, like, not doing too well. And put it right here and just hold it next to my heart and it it starts to like the bird actually relaxes and you could i don't know it's hard to explain but i could feel that bird like in the heart like does that make sense yeah it might not make sense but just holding it and giving it like dropping you know, electrolyte water into its beak, like it, you can feel that, like mm -hmm. you can feel the, the bird, like, I don't know, it's, it's, it's a hard thing to explain, but, but yeah, these birds are, they're gonna, 
mostly take care of themselves. Yeah, that, that's a that's a hard one. It, there, there's some things that I've learned in in this whole process of uh, somebody pooped on that one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. Nope. Good birdies. Good birdies. Yeah, I know. You're gonna poop, aren't you? Right <laughs> my arm. This one's really cool. It it lays down on its belly underneath the other birds and just eats and it eats a lot. Even though it's one of the smaller ones. Nice. This is the one that I was dropper feeding for a while. Baby chick food. There you go. And got the three ducks, uh, some other, like a whole batch of small birds. I'm learning. Like, mm -hmm. this is like, that was, uh, auction's not the best place to get birds. But I got one game hen, and that's a game hen. And she only spent a couple days in the chicken coop, and but stayed in the, in the trees above the coop. <laughs> and wouldn't go into the chicken coop at all. Oh, wow. And... On the third day, she realized that if she jumps onto the other side of the fence, she's free. <laughs> <laughs> and then she found this guy. <laughs> and Oh, and now they're a thing? So she, yeah, they have been for a bit. But she was sitting on eggs over at the neighbor's house. So I... Wait, is this the girl from over there? Yeah. Oh! So she, ha she has young ones but i don't know if ron does name ron yeah ron i think well he he said that he was gonna just put the like when they hatched mm -hmm. like she was sitting on eggs over there under some boxes at his yard but she, he said that he was gonna put them under a, a heat lamp yeah so hopefully hopefully we get more but Apparently they took all the roosters somewhere and gave them away. Yep. Somehow this one found his way back here. There's a big moment happening here at the garden right now where we're having fresh new chicks coming into the space. It's really a big moment for this space in particular because, you know, we're a transient community. Animal care is harder when you're traveling, especially when you have people coming in and out. And it's been great because we have like a chicken guy right now. We have a guy who's like all about the chickens and is helping them breed and like grow and be strong and looking after them. And it's really special because chickens can be one of the most sustenance giving animals you could ever have. Like, I mean, a dog is nice as a friend, but it doesn't give you food. <laughs> I mean, it, you can help them hunt. It can help hunt. But, you know, like a chicken can literally lay an egg a day, which can really sustain you. It's been a long journey for me trying to figure out like my relationship with chickens and, and stuff right now because I was a vegan um, but the way I'm feeling like I want to be able to like look after something and uh, be able to have a mutual exchange with them you know I don't want to go buy this egg but like if I can look after this chicken right here and then like maybe it's going to give me an egg maybe I'm going to eat that it's kind of nice I like that the chicks were just brought in last night put in the cage uh, brought into this space and uh, they still have their little cage in case they need to go into there but uh, you know it's a big process you know integrating another flock of chickens into the flock and trying to you know make that a smooth transition because chickens can get rough there's a real pecking order around so but it's pretty cool the whole circle of economy that you can have with a chicken you know like you have food scraps you feed it to the chicken and the chicken goes around eats that food scrap also goes around into the f woods here or not the woods but the orchard <laughs> and goes around and picks grubs and bugs that are damaging these trees 
And so like the chickens here are part of this whole ecosystem here and they're here to support it and help it. Nice! It finally happened guys. We have our November, October mushroom flush. It's here and it's now and it's the big year and I'm I'm leaving in a few days so it's really exciting that it's came now so I can really enjoy it. As you can see all behind me here there's a huge flush of mushrooms. It's so great. I've been waiting weeks for this to happen. You know usually I would put them in the pond for this to kind of happen but you know it just happens by itself at this time of year with the rain happening, the temperature out there. And boy, do we have a good haul. It's amazing, you know, because for so long it feels like a part of humans in this time and age, in this industrial era, yeah, we're losing touch with nature. And especially the world of mushrooms where we've deemed as toxic or poisonous, something that's dangerous to have a relationship with. Um, and so great that I get to come to a place like this and get to learn and experiment about the life of mushrooms. I get to watch them grow up from little babies up until they're nice and big, like this guy. Someone who just came here just donated a bunch of kitchen supplies and one thing in particular is miso. And last night I put on a little miso soup and uh, it's still rolling so now I'm going to add some shiitakes to it. Clean that this bus is gonna be quite the thing but it's what's needed you know like if we're gonna like share spaces you have to clean it <laughs> but even whenever I got here it was in a questionable state and that's just kind of like the vibe whenever you know anyone can come in stay in any structure it's time to just get a little bit of wear and tear it's not great for them 
Yes, yeah, so I'm cleaning out this bus here, the garden bus, and hopefully whenever we leave, someone else can easily just hop on into it. You know, the vision of like this kind of area right here was maybe to be like more of like a family friendly space because the compost hut is superb. And it's really close to these structures right here. That's maybe important for kids. And also the toilet seat in there is actually a little small. My hope here is just to get it nice and clean. So maybe someone else can just hop on in here whenever they want. I've recruited some help for the big one. We did it! Woo! Go. Oh, okay. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Looks good. Yeah. Woohoo! This is it? Yeah, what about it? I hope it all. Oh. And it's gonna overflow, so I have to close it again. <laughs> when I first opened it, it was like, but look how busy it is. Holy shit. Like, if you try and drink that, what will happen? I'm gonna wait for it to calm down a little bit. Do you, you think it's gonna out of my mouth? Uh, no, 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 nothing crazy. I just thought if you give it too much more oxygen, it might like. Pfft. Is it nice? Whoa! Nice. 